Hey booktube, this is Kelly. Thank you so much for watching my channel, Books I'm Not Reading. Um, and if you are celebrating Christmas today, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Um, the reason I'm posting this video today is because I am going to be talking about Sinner's Welcome by Mary Carr, a poetry collection. And this does include a poem about the nativity. I'm going to read that last. I'm going to start with another poem from this collection. Um, just first, a few words about this series, Poetry for Beginners. Um, the beginner in that is me. <laughs> because... Uh, since I joined BookTube, I uh, have have started reading poetry on a I wouldn't, wouldn't want to say regular, but more often, and uh, really, yeah, trying to learn more about this very specific and I think very challenging art form. Um, but I'm I'm the beginner <laughs> here, so just want to make sure that that's clear. Um, Mary Carr, I have never, until this, never read anything by her. Um, she considers herself a poet um, first, but I think she's actually more famous, at least in America, for her memoirs, um, which include uh, The Liars Club, which came out in 1995, so I'm really far behind, guys. Uh, and also um, another one called Lit. This one came out in 2006. Uh, whereas Lit came out in 2009. So, anyway, so let me, let me start uh, with a poem she wrote called Revelations in the Key of K. You can imagine why I might have been drawn to this. I came awake in kindergarten under the letter K, chalked neat on a field green placard, leaned on the blackboard's top edge. They'd caged me in a metal desk, the dull word writ to show K's sound. But K meant kick and kill. When a boy I'd kissed drew me as a whiskered troll in art, on my sheet the puffy clouds I made to keep rain in let torrents dagger loose. Screw those who color in the lines my mom had preached, words I shared that landed me on a short chair, facing the corner's empty sheetrock page. Craning up, I found my K high above. You'll have to grow to be here, its silence said. And in the surrounding alphabet, my whole life hid. Names of my beloved's sacred vows I'd break with my pencil applied to wall. I moved around the loops and vectors, Z to A, learning how to mean, how in the mean world to be. But while I worked, the room around me began to smudge. Like a charcoal sketch my mom was rubbing with her thumb. Then the instant went, the month and every season, smeared, till with a wrenching arm tug I was here, grown but still bent. To set down words before the black eraser swipes our moment into cloud, dispersing all to zip. And when I blunder in the valley of the shadow of blank about to break in half, my bean leans against my spinal K, which props me up, broomstick straight, a strong bone in the crypt of flesh I am. One of the things I really have loved about uh, starting to read poetry more often and um, especially sharing it with you on my channel uh, is that reading a poem and and reading it to you is a very different experience. So when I read the poem I can see what she's doing with the letter K. It's sprinkled throughout um, and a lot of times you'll hear those when I read the poem out loud, but at the same time, there are other words that make kind of a K sound. Um, uh, they caged me. Um, let's see. 
Uh, I came awake in kindergarten uh, under the letter K chalked neat on a field green placard leaned. So there's more K sounds in it than actually in the words themselves. Um, and I love how it's, I don't know, in some ways I feel like it's a, a kind of her journey as a writer uh, and uh, learning to write itself. I moved around the loops and vectors, Z to A. Um, I, I love that. I love that. I remember growing up, you know, we had um, sheets of paper. And I, I understand, like, they don't necessarily teach this in all schools anymore, how to do cursive. Um, but we had, yeah, there were these big black lines and then a dotted line in the middle. And you would, it would show you where the cursive letter should be on the page. And then you would just write it over and over and over again. Um, so I can definitely see having a, her having a big K uh, above her uh, in the school. And um, I also really like, um, she's, she's sort of, uh, talking about like time just sort of smearing by um, until she's tall enough to reach that letter K. Um, I was still here grown, but still, or excuse me, I was here grown, but still bent to set down words before the black eraser swipes our moment into cloud, dispensing all to zip. Um, so I think with poetry too, there's also this um, element of uh, that if we wait too long to write down that poetry has to be such intense feeling. You have to, because you have so few words to use. And uh, so it's, it's in a really intense feeling and it has to be captured quickly before you before you lose it. Um, so those were some things. There is a, a little bit of a biblical reference here as, and when I blunder in the valley of the shadow of blank about to break. Um, so uh, as I wander in, in, the, in the Bible, there's a verse, I wander in the, in the valley of the shadow of death. Um, and I like that she's got the shadow of blank, like a, an empty space or maybe a swear word or whatever the case may be, a blank about to break um, in half. My bean leans against my spinal K. And I just love that image of like, like there's something in you that's just core and you you just lean against it uh, when when things aren't maybe working the way, working out the way you want to. But like there's, uh, it props it props us up and and just pushing ourselves back into that so that we're not bent. There was something about this poem that just really resonated with me. Okay, I'm gonna read the other poem. Um, um, and this is about the nativity, uh, and so that's kind of why I want to share it with you. She has a series of poems throughout this collection called that start with Descending Theology. Descending Theology, the Nativity. She bore no more than other women bore, but in her belly's globe that desert night the earth's full burden swayed. Maybe she held it in her clasped hands as expecting women often do, or monks in prayer. Maybe at the womb's first clutch, she briefly felt that star shine as a blade point, but uttered no curses. Then in the stable, she writhed and heard beasts stomp in their stalls, their tails sweeping side to side, and between contractions, her skin flinched with a thousand animal itches that plague a standing beast's sleep. But in the muted womb world with its glutinous liquid, 
The child knew nothing of its own fire. No one ever does. Though our names are said to be writ down before we come to be. He came out a sticky grub, flailing the load of his own limbs, and was bound in cloth, his cheek brushed with fingertip touch. So his lolling head lurched, and the sloppy mouth found that first fullness, her milk spilled along his throat, while his pure being flooded her. Each feeds the other. Then he was left in the grain bin. Some animal muzzle against his swaddling perhaps breathed him warm, till sleep came pouring that first draught of death, the one he'd wake from, as we all do, screaming. Uh, so if you're familiar with the nativity story, I always really enjoy um, hearing about Mary's perspective or another perspective of the story. Um, it's not a story that I'd necessarily take um, word for word literally in the Bible. I like hearing how other people um, imagine themselves to be other, other people in the story and um, I don't know, it just somehow livens it up because um, if you've grown up in the church as, as I did, uh, then you've heard the nativity story a lot. <laughs> um, so, um, but I, I thought there were some really interesting things in here, especially in regards to um, her allusions to what will happen to this baby, um, that he's going to be crucified and die, um, her milk spilled along his throat, which, which made me think of like a, a cut, a cut throat, um, uh, and also, again, at the end, it's, it's quite dark, you know, um, till sleep came pouring, that first draught of death, the one he'd wake from as we all do, screaming. That's not like a, a pretty, um, oh, sort of our own nativity scenes, maybe if you have one in your home. Uh, you know, there's, we don't think about screaming. Uh, but I love thinking about Mary and, uh, you know, there's points to her pain and suffering in delivering Jesus. Um, you know, she briefly felt that star shine, the star alluding to the, the star in the east that the, the wise men are going to follow and come and find them. Um, but she briefly felt that star shine as a blade point. So, I mean, clearly there's, there's a lot of pain um, involved and the animals are making noise and of course there's got to be bugs and... Um, you know, are they, are they, is she getting bites of some kind, you know, from the bugs in the, in the, uh, in the barn? Uh, so, yeah, there's something that, that makes the scene smaller and also that, that stretches out across the whole story of, uh, Jesus' life. Um, so anyway, those are just a few thoughts. I would love to hear what you guys think of this. I do apologize for my poor reading if I screwed up a couple words here and there. Um, but yeah, Mary Carr, you guys were right. <laughs> She's amazing. This is an amazing collection of poetry, as I've said many times. And I'm really looking forward to reading one of her memoirs and uh, hunting down maybe some other collections of her poetry in the future and, and returning to this one as well because... Um, there are some really, really beautiful poems. And again, I, I, I know some of you are not interested in uh, religion, but I, it, this is definitely, I mean, there's, there's poems in here about abortion. There's poems in here about sex, um, about relationships, about suicide. Uh, so there's definitely a dark tone um, in it. Uh, but there's, wow, 
just really spectacular writing. So I'd love to hear if you've read this, what you thought, what your favorite Mary Carr book is thus far that you've read. YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.